Hello and welcome. CCC 11 has started with a long time control. We have 30 minutes uh, and 5 seconds increment per move. So it's a long time control. I'm expecting quite a lot of high level games. And actually today's game is no exception because this new evolution of the Terminator class Leela plays some really really strong chess as we'll see today. And um, this was a very nice handling of the complex endgame that um, appeared on the board. But let's start with the beginning. Uh, the game started with d4 and after knight f6, c4, g6, g3 and bishop g7 we reached the end of the book and here Lila preferred to continue with bishop g2. We have castles, knight c3 and now d6. Typical uh, king's indian position where black will try to get in e5 or c5, attacking white's d4 pawn. Dila continued now with knight f3, preventing e5 for now, and usually black continues here either with knight c6 or knight e7, supporting e5. c6 also is possible, but in this one, Sifos continued with c5, and here castles or d5 are the main moves, but Lila preferred to take now on c5. We have d takes on c5 and now castles, knight c6 and bishop f4. Lila's idea is to play knight e5, attack on c6 and uh, uncover this bishop. And here black usually continues with knight d4. This uh, is a preferred move here in this position. Also bishop e6 is possible. But in this one, Sifos played bishop f5 with the same idea of playing knight e4 and uh, unleashing this bishop on g7. But Lila comes first, she played knight e5, and now we have knight e4. But Lila pushes this knight back immediately with e3. We have knight e6, and now queen b3. Lila is attacking b7, and Sifos defends with rook b8, not fearing this bishop since uh, this bishop can be taken out and also white doesn't have good moves with the knight so rook b8 is safe at this point and until here we were following a game between two IMs, Oli, Ilonen and Tony Kane which ended in a draw there Oli continued with rook d1 here Lila came up with a novelty and she played here h3 and she intends to attack this bishop with g4 and the bishop doesn't really have many squares to go to. This pretty much forces now black to take on f4. We have e takes on f4 and now queen c8 attacking h3. King h2, queen c7, rook e1, rook d8 and now knight b5 attacking the queen. The queen goes to a5 and now since the c5 pawn is uh, undefended. Lila played here queen e3 intending to take it and black can defend here in, in many many ways. Rook d2 was uh, expected here by, by Lila when uh, she wanted to play rook d1 and then just give up the b2 pawn. b6 doesn't work here that's the point because then knight c6 and black loses at least an exchange but apart from b6 there are many ways to defend. Sifos played here bishop e6, a move that Lila wasn't very impressed with. Her evaluation jumped up a bit and she now just took the pawn on c5. And now we have knight d7 attacking knight and queen. And if Lila now takes on, on d7, then black is fine. His, uh, his bishops are uh, nicely placed. However, Lila played here queen c7 attacking this queen. We have queen takes, knight takes, and in this position, Sifos made a positional blunder. Here, Lila was expecting bishop f5, not allowing the knight to take it. And then she wanted to continue with g4, and then knight takes, pawn takes, and bishop d3, attacking this pawn on c4. And after b3 and e6, black is uh, fine. The position is better for white but at least black's pieces are all active and uh, can play which would have been a much better situation than what happened in the game. In the game after knight c7 Sifos took the knight on e5 
But now after knight takes on e6, hitting both the rook and the bishop, black is forced to take back on e6. And now after f takes on e5, this bishop on g7 is very, very unhappy because he won't be able to play. Lila is intending to play here f4. And then what is this bishop supposed to do? He can get out the e7 blocks the way and white's pawn barrier on, uh, on e5 and g3 also prevents the bishop to get active. Here Sifos continued with rook d2 attacking both f2 and b2 but now Lila played f4 and here Lila was expecting g5 the last chance to activate that bishop here she wanted to take on g5 and now after rook f8 we can see that black gets some play uh, Lila wanted to continue with rook d1 and give up this pawn on b2 and then king g1 and after rook f2 take on b7 and after rook f5 bishop c8 threatening a fork here king f7 and h4 the game could have continued with rook takes on a2 rook d3 a5 bishop d7 and white is still better this is plus one for white but at least black has uh, some play this bishop at least is attacking something whereas in the game it was completely inactive but instead of g5 Sifos took the pawn on b2 a positional misjudgment here by Sifos who who preferred to take the pawn but failed to see the bad fate of that bishop here now after h4 Lila thinks that this is completely gone now there's no way for, for black to activate and being a piece down is just a, a loss here, especially against someone as strong as Lila. There are no chances. Here Sifos played b6 and now we have king h3 and Lila is going up the board with the king and uh, she wants to attack this pawn on g6 actually. We have rook d8, rook d1 challenging that rook. We have rook takes, rook takes. And now Lila gave up another pawn, but once Lila deploys her pieces to their best positions, Black won't be able to make progress. And uh, eventually Lila will be able to pick up some pawns. We have bishop c6. At this point, she's evaluating this position at plus two. And by now, Sifos also saw the problems with his position, but it was too late. We have rook a5 and now bishop e8. Very, very strong move. As mentioned, Lila wants to, to get to this pawn. We have bishop h6, king g4, bishop f8, and now h5. Very, very strong move. If king g7 now, for example, then after pawn takes, pawn takes, and king g5, Lila would be winning this pawn. So after h5, Sifos is pretty much forced to exchange those pawns. But now black has absolutely no chances to activate that bishop and um, this bishop can also go to g4 and attack this pawn on e6 we have rook c5 bishop b5 rook c7 the rook went back to the seventh rank to guard the, these pawns we have now rook d8 immobilizing the opponent as much as possible king g7 king g4 now and lila's king is coming over now to the queen side to defend the c4 pawn and allow the bishop and the rook to attack something and e6 is uh, the natural square or, or pawn that uh, the rook and the bishop can attack together so Lila is gearing up to uh, to transfer this bishop to g4 and this rook to c6 however there is a, a very long way until that but eventually Lila will get there we have now king f7 rook a8 bishop g7 king f3, bishop f8, king e3, king g8, king e2, king f7, and now king d3. The king is in uh, position, and now the bishop is free to move. We have king g7, bishop e8, and as mentioned, this bishop is coming to g4. We have king g8, bishop h5, rook d7 check, king e3, rook c7, bishop g4 now, and... Uh, Taking this pawn, of course, loses after bishop e6 check, winning the rook. So we have instead king f7, but now king d4 defending the pawn. Bishop h6, but this bishop is really not doing anything there on h6. And now actually Lila with a single move 
completely paralyzes two of black's pieces with bishop h5 check forcing the king to g7 and we can see that the king doesn't have squares to move to and uh, the bishop also doesn't have squares to move to so that means that Sifos is reduced to moving with the rook and the pawns and he really doesn't want to move with any of them because now after rook d8 black is in Zugzwang and if the, if the pawns move forward then uh, they become easier targets and if the rook goes to c6 then Lila takes over the 7th rank and she will pick up those pawns and if instead the rook moves on the 7th rank to b7 as in the game then rook c8 and finally this rook is in position to attack this pawn we have rook d7 check king e4 rook d2 bishop g4 now king f7 rook c6 and Sifos can defend that pawn he played bishop f8 bishop takes on e6 with check king g7 g4 now Lila is advancing the pawns she has now a kingside majority we have rook h2 rook c7 rook e2 check king f5 a6 rook c6 forces rook b2 rook c8 h6 rook a8 a5 and now after rook a7 black can't really make progress while Lila is um, intending to play bishop d5 king e6 attack the pawn on e7 and push these pawns so at this point Sifos played here b5 he's giving up one of those pawns in order to advance the other one as far as possible we now have rook b7 pinning the pawn b4 rook a7 going for the other pawn rook c2 rook takes on a5 b3 rook b5 and b2 and that pawn is quite far advanced now one step away from becoming a queen but this is as far as that uh, pawn is allowed to go we now have rook b7 king h7 bishop d5 king g7 rook b6 rook f2 king e6 attacking e7 and this king is now going to d7 to allow this this bishop to go up the board if now the rook takes on f4 then uh, lila can get rid of the b2 pawn and uh, she can uh, push this pawn forward and if the rook takes on g4 then even rook g2 is very nice here just pinning that rook and uh, pushing this pawn up the board neither the king or the bishop can do anything about it but instead of rook takes on f4 Sifos played rook c2 but after king d7 he gave up the b2 on anyway he played rook c1 we have rook takes on b2 h5 g takes king h6 rook b8 now bishop g7 rook b6 check king takes on h5 king takes on e7 and now Lila has three passed pawns and uh, completely winning endgame of course we have rook f1 e6 and here rook f4 is possible but at this point when in the endings when one side has a decisive advantage sometimes computers go crazy and uh, do all kind of weird moves we have bishop d4 and now after rook b5 instead of uh, rook takes on f4 we have rook g1 and after king d6 we have bishop c5 check just simply giving up the bishop doesn't make any sense at all but hey at this point nothing really helps we have now rook e1 f5 king g5 rook b8 and from here on lila is uh, pushing up the pawns she gave up the f pawn and slowly she will push the c and d pawns up the board and she will promote them so make your bets will there be queens or knights here we go soon the c pawn will move up the board but first lila likes to play a bit around with uh, Xiphos. here goes the c pawn and we have a rook exchange and after that a queen and then we have e7 and after king f7 we have a second queen and as Lila likes to do she gives up now one of those queens and mates with the other one there you go a very very nice game by Lila I especially liked very much this complex end game which I found very very instructive so after she completely eliminated any kind of counterplay on the king side 
making sure that this bishop can't activate she went over to the queen side to defend this weakness and allow these two pieces to um, attack together the e6 pawn and then Lila just marched up these pawns and won very very nicely executed endgame I would like to thank to uh, René, Adolf, Marc, Sebastian, Todo, Radu and Guilherme for their contribution to my channel Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.